If you're not following up on estimates, you are losing work. Close your sales automatically with Ready Business Systems Estimate Follow-Up Automation with Prospecting. Replace your office staff with this tireless, reliable employee who will relentlessly follow up on set estimates until they are won or lost. With the simple click of a link, it offers clients a 10-day, 30-day, or spring follow-up if they have not yet made a decision. Put your customer service on cruise control with Ready Business Systems Customer Service Automation. This automation will email surveys after the completion of work, ask happy customers to write an online review, and alert managers about bad feedback. It will check in with clients monthly via email or text. Regular automated customer touch points will simultaneously improve your customer service while providing upsell opportunities throughout the year. Watch the sales roll in and your customers smile. Give your office administrator superpowers with Ready Business Systems Office Automation. This automation will virtually eliminate your collection problems and accelerate cash flow by aggressively pursuing customers' expired cards and failed charges via text, email, and phone calls. With the RBS five-day sales process, new leads will be kept on their toes while waiting for their estimate with follow-up text, sales emails, a sales letter, and a customized sales video until their proposal is sent. When it's time to grow, Ready Business Systems Marketing Automation will bring you the applicants and work to power ahead. This powerful automation will handle your digital, telephone, and direct mail marketing needs with six marketing themes throughout the year. During each theme, it will market your existing database using a customized monthly newsletter, voicemail bomb, customized postcard, and many other proven marketing tasks aimed to acquire new leads from proven online and offline sources. Never worry about being short of employees again with Ready Business Systems Recruiting Automation. At six strategic times of the year, before you can finish saying, we don't have enough help, a flood of pre-screened applicants will fill your inbox, text messages, and voicemail looking for a career. By staying in constant contact with your applicants through a series of automated emails, voicemail bombs, and postcards, applicants will always be at your fingertips when you need them. Recruiting for staff is equally as important as marketing for work. This automation will serve as the backbone to your company's HR program. It will automatically feed only best fit employees to your HR admin as to not waste anyone's time. Applications, interviews, hiring, and termination checklists, BCIs, and termination procedures are all included in this robust automation. Automate your HR and hiring processes to make sure you recruit only rock stars for your business. All right. Hello, everybody. I jumped on sharing that really quickly because I was grabbing a cup of coffee. It's chilly here. Texas this morning, it's only 42 degrees. Um, so I wanted to have a cup of warm coffee with me for a bit. It won't stay warm, I'm sure, but hello, everybody. We're going to um, say hello. I'm going to preface this at the beginning since there's quite a few of you here and say that um, I have my, my spring break for me and my, my kids. And so we're not on a tropical island. <laughs> Um, I wish that background always makes it seem like we could be, but um, we're here at my home <laughs> and they are here with me. So, and they're eight and four. So if you hear someone sound like they're getting killed behind me, it's hopefully not that happening or the two of them are actually doing that. Um, so if I have to, I might have to pause for a second, but they're both they're I jokingly say that they're genuinely pretty well behaved. Um, so they should be. They should be cool for the next couple hours. Um, so yeah, just a, just a little heads up though. If I gotta if I mute real quick and take off running, it's probably because someone's arm is hanging or doing something crazy. Um, and I'm sure, hopefully, all of you can understand that part of it. But if you have kids, you you probably certainly do. Um, well, if we'll get started here, 
I don't think this one's going to take a full two hours um, just because it's the document editor. I mean, it's super good stuff, but there's genuinely, genuine, generally not, um, there's not a million things about it. We'll go as deep as we need to and go through some of the settings and, and get good at looking at the documents and things. But um, it's not as in depth as as some other you know parts of the system might be. Uh, it touches quite a bit of places, but um, yeah. Sorry, I, I was trying to keep an eye on emails um, to see if anybody call you know messages in or says they're having issues. I was trying to keep a keep an eye on the. Keep an eye on it to make sure that we weren't somebody wasn't trying to get in. Um, I'm assuming since there's people in here, it was pretty easy to get in and everybody got the links and stuff. So um, I'm going to assume everybody else should have had no problems. If they do, I'll watch for an email to come in. Um, anyway, so the plan here is going to be go through the document editor, how to access it, what types there are, the different settings, um, adding, editing a document why you'd want to use the document and then editing content, stuff like that. So um, if you haven't been to one of these trainings before, it's very sort of open, open flow. Um, I work off of this outline. I don't have like a, you know, memorized script or anything that I try to go off of. So I bounce around a little bit. Sometimes I might talk about an area and realize later. Um, I will eventually drag this outline over out of the way. And then I'll I'll use it as my guide posts. Um, but I generally go through the information pretty free form. Um, that just helps me be able to kind of cover the area and the stuff that we need. And if there's questions that come up along the way, I don't get too bad. You know, there's there's no reason to not hold or not ask your to hold or not ask your questions. Um, the outline it's because we're keeping it kind of topic specific. Then the questions are probably going to be about something. If we're going to cover it later. I'll, I'll usually say that, but a lot of times I'll just bounce on to the next idea and, and move back around. Um, so if you do have questions, I, I would encourage you that I noticed the last time the chat popped open at the top of my screen and made it easy for me to see. So if you don't want to unmute and, and ask the question right away, if you chat it in, I could see it and then we can talk about it. I do like some participation because I will ask some questions along the way. So if there's anybody here that's willing to unmute and say hello and 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 um, you know answer questions when I ask them, that would be helpful and beneficial too. You don't have to have your cameras on and share and do all that kind of stuff, but even just unmuting <coughs> and, and being able to like say yes or answer my questions would be cool. Um, but if not, then I'll just. I'll ask and wait a couple of seconds awkwardly. <laughs> and then we'll see. Um, we'll see where, where it goes from there. So all right. Well, here's the here's the thing. Um, I'll I'll remind everybody again. If you have to leave, this is being recorded. We're gonna post it to the YouTube channel. So if you have to leave or whatever, miss something, you want to catch the end, then that's cool. Um if you Sorry, I was thinking about something else and trying to talk at the same time. Um, yeah, if you need to rewatch the end of this or whatever later, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to record it and then we'll post it to our RBS, the Ready Business Systems YouTube channel uh, so that it's out there and, and available uh, for anyone to uh, take a look at. So um, I guess we'll start by, I'll ask, and you guys can use, if you, if you don't, if you've never used Zoom before, in the little window where it's sharing this my screen, there's a there's a um, there's a reactions button usually. I think it's mine's it says more, but there is a reaction section. You could do thumbs up, clapping, hands down, smiley face. There's no thumbs down right away, but there's some quick yes, no, those kinds of things. Um, you could use those quickly. Those show up on the little screen. That that has your name on it that I can yeah. see down in a different window. Um, if you, I'm going to mute everybody just to be sure. But um, if you guys are using currently already using documents, uh, give me a thumbs up or say yes. If you're already if you already have some documents, yeah, there you go, thumbs up. Chris and Dale, cool, Thad, 
Justin Freeman. So most everybody either heard me or found the reaction button. Cool. Um, all right. So some of this, the, the basic stuff might be a little bit, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it, but we'll go through how to access it. What, what, what can I do with them? Why they're important, stuff like that. Um, and then we'll dive into the, some, the more advanced stuff. Um, but if you're not using them and you need to know where to find them, documents are found in a lot of places throughout Service Autopilot. They're used in things like sending emails, text messages, sending out estimates, um, invoices. There's all kinds of different places documents are used, but to access them and create them, you can either create one-off individual ones in certain places, or you can, sorry, hold on a second. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of housekeeping. Sorry about that. I got to try, I try to keep track of my, my timing. So I was keep, I have a clock, we have a clocking app. Now my grid's in the wrong spot. There we go. What is happening? I didn't, and my grid moved and now everybody's in a different place. Okay, um, you find your documents in the settings area. So if you click on the little gear icon, and if you haven't been to one of these before, if you've been to one, you're gonna hear this before, but there's two places in Service Autopilot that when you click the button, you don't have to do anything else. The settings icon, the little gear icon, and the, the quick search. When you click that, it the cursor loads into the search box so you could just start typing what you're looking for. So we're looking for documents. So I start typing DOC and it filters the list down and all it shows is documents. If you typed anything else, it starts to look through it, but that's a really quick way. You don't have to click back into this box again. The search, the search bar is the same if you're looking for a client. If you notice, it's up there flashing. When that loads, the, bot, the things in there, you don't have to move your mouse and click on it. So if you click on it, you can leave your mouse there and start typing. The same with, that, with the settings. So if you click on that, it starts filling then we could click on documents. Um, so that's how you get to them. There are 11 documents in this test account I was, I'm using. I may switch to another one because um, I thought, I would have thought there might've been some more, but um, maybe they're inactive. Yeah, okay, there's some inactive ones. Um, but, You'll have how many ever list of documents you have here. You could change the page size to up to 500, I think. So if they want to see them all on one page, there is some functionality here on the list that I want to talk about and go through first. Um, it, it groups them by type and then puts them in alphabetical order with numerics at the top. So you can name things with numbers and they'll show up at the top of your list. Um, I like to call that list scaping. So if you if you learn how to shape your list and you can put in different um, different characters at the beginning of your documents, you can you could you can control what shows up where and at the top. But the the best place that you can util, you could you could use the best thing you can use to search through them is the filters up here. And you could type in the name of the document you're looking for and it'll find it. Um, alternatively, if you had a list of 500, you could use control F or command F on a Mac to search through the list and that'll highlight ones. So if I hit command F and I type in, let's say copy, it'll, it'll say here's, there's one of one matching down here at the bottom and it'll highlight it and you could scroll up and down to you find the ones. Um, if I search by name and put copy in here and hit enter, it's gonna filter my list down to only the ones that include that those, those characters or that word, you know, whatever you type in. The other one is type. So you can, and we'll go through what these types mean, but you could filter by type. So if you're looking for an estimate document and you only only have a couple, you can click apply and then 
you can select estimate for type from the list and hit apply and it's only going to show that those estimate types but it'll show all of them so if you have 500 of those then you're you're going to have a big long list but typically you're probably not going to have a ton of estimate ones others emails some of the other the other ones that are in there when you clear it out it shows them all again there are three tabs active inactive and all i would always recommend that you make things inactive first. And if you've been to any of these trainings, this is a repeat of, of where I've said it before, but you, you never know when you might need it, especially if you've ever downloaded documents or the launch bundle or anything from Service Autopilot or a certified advisor or anything else. A lot of times they're bundled into a group of other things. And so if you delete one, but then you realize later you, you wanted it back and you have to go delete the whole bundle, you're going to get everything else along with it. And so not the most ideal situation a lot of times, because then if you're only after one or two things, it might come with tags and, and custom fields and, and documents and everything else. And you would end up downloading all those again, too, and have duplicates of a lot of stuff when you're only looking for one thing. So if, if you've downloaded, for instance, the launch bundle, which I'll reference a bunch of times, and it's partly self-serving a little bit because when I did work at Service Autopod, I created it and, and made it so people could have it. Um, so there's a lot of documents in there that I'll reference and we'll talk about as we're going through things because I, I know, I'm I very familiar with them. I used to use a lot of those. Almost all of them came from use in my lawn care and landscaping business that I had before I worked at, at, at Service Autopilot. So I used them in my business and that's the reason I gave them to other people was because I felt like it would be a good starting point for people starting out. And so I'll reference them a bunch. And if you could see here, a lot of them are inactive in this test account. Um, and we'll let the, I will reactivate them and I'll show you how to do that. But I would never, I would never delete. There is a delete option. So if you know for sure you're never going to use it, then delete it, but it's permanent and you can't get it back. So just make them inactive. Um, you can see all documents by clicking the all tab. There's a couple of ways to add documents, so we're not going to get into that yet, but you could click the add document button or you can go to the actions button and add document. But what I did want to show you from here is this is where you make them active or inactive, but the biggest functionality here is making them copyable. So um, one of the things I'm going to make a couple of these active just because I want them active. So if you highlight them by checking the box and going to actions, make active. Now the couple of documents are going to show up in the in the in the active tab. And one of them is a blank that the, it came from the launch bundle, but it's 01 email template. And then it's got the marketplace, um, the thing that it appends when you download the marketplace with the, the marketplace and then the date it was downloaded. And then the description is all of the launch bundle ones have a description. So this is a blank template with header and footer. So it gives you a starting point that you can use. And so again, if you don't have it, I'll show you really quickly. You can hover over the marketplace and hit control and then click or command click on a Mac and it'll open the marketplace in a brand new tab and it won't lose this list. And I'll explain why that's important in a minute when we look at some of these documents, but you can come in here and then you can type launch bundle and hit search. And after it loads. So if you are on the pro version of Service Autopilot, you're not gonna see this pro plus version because it does have a couple automations in it. And so it won't even show on your list. So if you typed it in right now and looked, you're not going to see this. Um, you're not gonna see the pro plus version, but if you have pro plus, so you have automations and all the other text messaging and stuff, there's a couple other things that come along with the bundle that we included that you'll see here. So you'll see two versions if you're on pro plus, if you're on pro, you'll only see one. So you can just click one or the other and click view. And you'll know if it's in your account because it already has the, the little, the little like um, download icon or not the download icon, like the cloud icon, meaning we already have it. If not, it should just say free. And if you click free, it'll say, hey, yes, here you go, you're downloading it. But here's what's included. So for the Pro Plus version, you get two automations, estimate follow-up and invoice past due, um, V2 and V3 versions of the estimate request and a credit card update form that the estimate request you could use on your website, stuff like that. There's forms, we're, we're not doing forms in this training, but what I wanted to point out is the documents. And so I think there's 28, if I remember correctly, 
that there are here. There's a couple that are numbered. The rest just have names. There's some estimate email acceptance emails. There's some estimate documents. There's a couple of commercial invoice emails, a residential invoice email, um, yearly maintenance contracts. There's there's a there's a few starting points. Uh, they are for lawn care and landscaping. Um, we never got into. I never got into developing anything for any of the other industries. So sorry if you're a cleaning company or you, you don't use service autopilot for lawn care or landscaping. Uh, there was nothing in the launch bundle. Uh, we do have some other options at RBS for some of our automations that are less lawn care and landscaping specific, but Justin came from the landscaping world. Steve, who works with us too, is in the landscaping world. Like all of our stuff, our examples, our, our information comes from landscaping. So it's kind of in our wheelhouse to keep talking about it. Um, but all, <laughs> all of these documents come in here. Everybody quickly, I know there's only a couple of people, so this should go fast too. But every anybody, any, does everybody already have the launch bundle? Do Use a reaction again and give me a thumbs up if you already have it downloaded. I wish there was a way to say yes. Justin, cool, man. You got it. We had a couple of people. Nathan already has it. All right. Well, at least a couple of people do. All right. So if you have them, you'll, Nathan, cool. You guys will be, you'll know when I reference them and you have them. If you don't have it, go download it. It's a really cool, some of you, it depends on when you signed up for Service Autopilot too. If you've been an uh, OG member, I know we tried to send out an email to, to remind everybody um, when we created it, but not everybody got it. New customers for sure have gotten it because gotten it we started sending out automations and adding it to the launch package. Like, there was way more to it after I created it, but if you were a member before 2019 or 2020, really, um, you probably, you may not have it. Um, there are some other things that come along with it, a couple services, custom fields, and then tags. Oh, excuse me. Um, so you'll know if you have it very quickly. Documents are the fastest place because you'll have this LB and then marketplace and you'll know it's downloaded. Uh, if you don't, go grab it. It's got, at least at minimum, it's got, and you can grab the pro version if you don't want the automations or anything else, but just, yeah, go grab it and use it because I'm going to, I'm going to reference it a couple of times and either way, it's still, it's still a good starting point for a lot of documents. Okay. So back to the uh, document list. And one thing else I want to point out is that because there are so many uses within it, it's important to have these because you could customize what you're communicating to your customers. I don't know if any of you got a chance to read the blog post I did that, that kind of went along with this session, but it, it described the, 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 the ability to communicate with your customers and communicate quickly as super important in your business. I mean, in this day and age, that's the customers expect it. It's not even if you're not even setting yourself apart necessarily just from your competition, if you communicate with your customers, they expect it and they're demanding it. And so being able to build a document or some other type of communication system with them. And here at RBS, I think we do a really good job of associating our list of um, automations that do a lot of stuff, but they almost all of them are built around building documents. And so even if we, even if you download a bunch of our automations and they come with some documents, the, the ability and the capability of being able to um, edit them, customize them and do work for them is, is essential, in, especially inside Service Autopilot. So getting to know how to do this is super critical and it, you, got, you just got to know how to do it. One thing I will, will and I, I'll keep saying one thing I know, but one of the things I really definitely want to point out is when you have your list here, now again, there's only 14 items, so it's all showing on one screen and it's not filtered and it's not a big deal. But if you click on a, on a document to open it and let's say it is filtered. So let's go to filter type and we'll go to estimate because that, that'll go down to only two. If you go to basic, like let's say just basic estimate, I click and edit. We're not gonna talk about the settings yet. We will in a second, but then you click edit to go to the document. It opens this up. I'm going to close it out and hit yes, save it, just because when I come back, if you notice, it's not filtered anymore. The list isn't. It refreshes and it starts from scratch. So if you filter your list down, let's say by a name, and let's say you are RBS customer, 
and we've given you one of the one of the your your tasks that you're working on is going through and editing our our RBS 03 documents. And there's a list of them. Maybe there's 50 just from that one because there's text messages and and tickets and th there's all kinds of different documents. And you filtered it by name and you go to click on it and it opens. And then you come back and the list isn't filtered. You have to keep typing in the name in the description. So one thing to, to keep in mind is that any of these documents, if you click on it the first, not any of them, I'll take that back because there are some text messages that look differently. But if you click on them the first time, it's gonna open the settings and you can change those and save them and close it out and it'll stay on this filtered list. But the minute you go to the document editor and move off of the list screen, it's gonna reset when you come back, unless you hold down the control and I clicked with my finger on the, the, the touchpad. Unless you hold down the control or the command key on a Mac, which I'm on a Mac, that's why I keep saying that, but it's the control key. So if you hold on the command key, let's say I wanna open all three of these documents and I click, it's gonna open it in a new tab. So it's opening number one, number two, and then number three, and it's gonna open them in their own tab. Now you can do whatever you want with them, change them, edit them, save them. And then when you close them, so I'm gonna close all these back out, and come back to my list, it's still filtered and you have that same, that separate tab. This will probably be the only time I recommend having other than one or two, maybe having multiples of tabs open and you can open 10, 15 documents. Now, obviously it gets really confusing if you're bouncing between them and switching them. So I wouldn't recommend spending a ton of time opening a thousand tabs, but any given day, like if I'm editing documents for a client for one of their automations, because you know maybe whatever we're adding their logo we're doing the different things and we'll get into editing each of the sections but you i might have five or ten five between five and ten open at any given point as long as i don't have a million other tabs so like i might close this marketplace detail one because i don't need that open all the time and i might just have on the left my admin documents and then i'll start opening up the ones i want to edit and have those open and just go go be able to click through the tabs of those so that when I come back to my edited list or my filtered list, it's not all jacked up. Does that make sense to everybody? I hope hopefully that's one of the main points for as far as the list and stuff that I wanted to go by because there's nothing else on this list. You can't fill you can't do anything else. You can't sort by title description. You can't do it. The one thing you, the only thing other thing you need to look for is the date modified so you'll know when the last time you've touched it was. And I would also make the recommendation that if it doesn't say new here, it means you're using some type of old document editor and you've been a customer for uh, Serves Autopilot for a, quite a while because it says new, but the new document editor has been around since like 2018 or something, I think maybe earlier. Um, if it doesn't say new, you're probably using it for an estimate or some old documents and they're not as editable. And when you click on them, they're gonna open up. I don't even, I bet there's probably, yeah, here's one. So free aeration service. If I click on that, it shows this document editor. This is literally called, the, we, this would be called the old document editor. This has all of the pieces in it and you can't customize it as easy. Like you can change some stuff, but it's, it's a really old thing. The personalization tools, some of the templates are in here, but this is a really old document. So if you see a document in your list that doesn't say new, which again, this, this test account is way old. So if it's before, yeah, look, look here, probably earlier 2019 or earlier 2017. So if it's, if it doesn't say new, it's probably a really old type, a really old estimate. And I would almost say you probably don't want to mess with using those or or at least convert them over to one of the new types and you can copy and paste a lot of the stuff and you'll find as we go through the template and the different things that you can make a lot of that easier okay Does that makes sense so watch for that um you can't filter by that or do anything with it you just have to look at this column that's added to it and know that if it says new it's it's with the new document editor if not it's with the old one and if you are using those regularly there's a good chance that something doesn't work right or it might break. And if you did call Service Autopilot, I would, the chances are, I know the last time I remember them explaining how it was ever dealt with is we don't, we don't support the old document editor. And so they may not say anything if this isn't working right. 
to, they'll just say, you know, convert it and switch it to a new one, which again, should, isn't that hard. And after you've finished learning all the stuff we're going to learn, you, you're probably going to want to anyway, because of the stuff you can add. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much accessing and I'll drag my thing back over, but that's pretty much accessing it. What are they? What can I do with them? Where, are, why are they so important? That's pretty much why, what the, how the list stuff works. Uh, so now we're, we're going to dig into, we're going to talk about the types of documents that you can create. Um, mm, my chocolate coffee water. I don't know how you guys are, but I grew up, my dad drank black, just straight coffee. And I don't know how to this day, I have to have a ton of chocolatey, like creamer, and some kind of flavoring in it. <laughs> Sorry if that offends anyone. If you can drink, if you can drink straight, regular black coffee, good for you. Um, I can sometimes maybe do like a nitro cold brew with no flavoring, but even that, it's got to be cold. I can drink cold coffee, but warm, mm, it's got to have tons of cream or sugar and <laughs> flavorful stuff. Um, okay, so let's look at the types of documents. And you might be wondering, well, how do I figure out what kind of types there are? Two ways. You can look at the filtered list and pull down any of these, or we can create a new document. And the very first box at the top or very first thing you have to set is the document type. And so here's the types you can build. You can build a chemical document, a client email, an estimate, an invoice email, a landing page, which we're not gonna spend a ton of time on because they're, it, I know you can build them, but they're not used the way that they're supposed to be. It's not a landing page that you could really use on your website. So we're not going to get into it a ton. Marketing emails, mobile app emails, others, and text message. Now the document type is essential some of the time for it to show up in the proper places. So when I say that, a chemical document is only going to show up in the chemical settings area. So you can build client instruction emails, recommend recommendation instruction emails, upsell emails, Things, things that you need for the chemical tracking portion of Service Autopilot. And if you don't have that turned on, it, this may not even show on your list. Um, I don't remember, but you, 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 you would only, you would only need these chemical documents and we're not going to spend a ton of time going through them, but you would need those for the chemical tracking stuff. Um, again, if you're building out client client instruction emails and stuff like that, you can, you can create them type chemical and then utilize them. There are ways you could you work on these someplace else. So where you access them is in the chemical sections and all of these documents get accessed in different places, but that's why the settings sometimes matter. Client emails will show up in the most places. So it'll send an email from the dispatch board. It'll send an email from the client screen. It'll, you can pull it up in the, if you're going from your client list and sending a marketing email to people, client emails show up in the most places. And so a lot of times you can default to starting it as a client email and seeing if it'll show up where you want it. If you're trying to use it someplace and it's not showing up there, chances are it's the wrong document type. And it's probably, you maybe set it as a marketing email and you're wanting it to show up on the dispatch board or different place, you know, someplace else. And it's not there. Come and change that like marketing email to client email and see if it shows up there. It's hard to troubleshoot or say exactly Um all the places where you might be looking to try and find something. So if you can think of an example or know something, we, we can take a look at it. But most, most times marketing email has been selected, but it, they're, you're trying to send it from like the dispatch board. Estimates are very specific to their own type. Um, and they'll have some other settings that we'll get into, but estimate emails are only used for uh, estimate document types are only used for sending estimates. And so they'll convert to a PDF nicely most of the time if you do them right, but they'll also you be used for the, the, um, the estimate, view my proposal. So estimate emails are going to use a ton. Invoice emails are just that. You can add an in invoice grid, but then you can create custom invoice emails that you can send out to your customers. And again, from the launch bundle, I gave a residential version and a commercial version. One has the grid. The other one just has the number. You can make your estimates look like like you get from like the, the electric company where you get this email and it's got all the bi the billing details and all the information, but it's not like a PDF that you have to download. You don't have to do anything with it to print it out. It just looks like the information. You can build that with an invoice email. 
Again, landing page. Um, it's a legacy feature that's not available for a lot of a, a lot of accounts. So depending on how again how soon you how recently you signed up, you might not even see that. Again, this is a really old test account. Back when Service Autopilot would let would build you could build websites in Service Autopilot. It was a very short while where it's even capability. Um, most people don't even know it existed, or if they did, then they may have a landing page document. I always mention it just because. Um, it's there, but client emails sort of replace it and you can use the document to show in the, at the end of a form that says, hey, you know, thanks for visiting us, stuff like that. But the landing page isn't used a lot of places, but it may show up in your account. So I wanted to mention it. Um, marketing emails are just that. They're, they're sent for, you can use them for an array of reasons, but the marketing thing, the marketing type will then show up in the, when you go to the CRM list and send it to marketing people. And if they've opted out of your marketing messages, you don't, you, you, it'll default to the, the type of marketing. Um, the reason this was even created, I think as a document type was so that if people did opt out of your marketing, they, it wouldn't go through to them if they've opted out. Um, on the, when you set, when you send emails, or mess, you know, documents, emails typically from certain locations. You can check the box and see where, like, what type of document you're sending, and that's more of like a, a category, an email category. And so you can change that setting other places, but this was one way that just made it a marketing email. So if people opted out of it, and I didn't mean to click on that. But if people opted out of it, they wouldn't get them automatically, um, and they won't show up. So it'll it'll say it'll you know skipping this person. A mobile app email is just that. Um, they're documents that'll be sent during using the service autopilot mobile app. You can build those out specially because they are on a mobile, and you can create the document easier and stuff like that. Um, other is typically going to be used for. Other types of documents, the specific use case here is if you're creating a ticket. So RBS has a ton of automations that do create tickets. They used to be, excuse me, used to be to-dos, but they create a ticket with, it, it may be a calendar event, it might be a note, it might be a call, um, but you, you would create an other type document in that instance. And that's what we get created to create the note or the call is that, is the other type. So you'll use those for, for tickets. And then text message is just that. Um, I got to look and see. Let me see if there's not one in here. Um, so we'll create one and I'll show you what it does. But text messages open. When you click on the name of it, it opens to the editing screen. So if you control click, that takes you to a different area. And so that's the only time you're not going to want to open them separate. But um, we'll create a couple text messages and I'll show you how that works in a minute. But that's the types of documents. Um, based on the setting that you choose, you will see different types of other fields that need to be filled out. But the default and for most of them, there's a name, a description and a subject. Um, I think every one of the boxes has that type. It has those, at least those three, but there are some other ones. So if I click chemical, it does, it's, it's got name, description, and subject. If I click client email, again, name, description, subject. If I click invoice email, then it has name, description, subject, include PDF in email, and is this the default invoice email document? It defaults to yes for some reason. It's thinking every time you create one, it's gonna you're gonna make it the default. So you always remember to check no if you don't want to make it default, or if you're not sure, you can come back and change this later. And it gives you the option to then not select it, to either send or not send the PDF. Then you can do you can then select the invoice format from this list for this particular invoice email. So if you wanted to send different email formats, so maybe one, and I'll just use this as an example, but if you want to set one as your standard invoice, now I'm not going to get into the whole invoice customization area and stuff like that, because there's all these types and you can go look at them and see what each of them are. But if you want to send your standard invoice to one for one set of people, then create an invoice email that uses that one. 
then you might want to send one that says no account balance. So do that, but then put in the description, standard invoice email with no account balance. You can write as much as you want in the description box and it'll fill in here. The, the name, the title is limited. The name is limited to, I think so many characters. I know it times out it's so many or it just stops adding to them. Like this one here, it's this many characters is how many you're allowed to have. And then it just stops having it on there. Like the, the, the parenthesis is is the last character that's allowed and so the rest is just it's just cut off it's truncated so the name is is you can only fit so much and then the description has a place for more so you could use the name and the description to make it a bigger area um you can you can customize the invoice format i do believe if it's not set and you save it it might use whatever you have set as your default but it will absolutely override any default invoice format you've set in your company settings under the invoice customization in the invoice customization area in the settings. So you can you can send custom. Now, I, my recommendation here, if you're going to build a custom invoice email, and we can look at what couple we've I've done, you know, from the thing, or we'll look at a couple in here. Um, but I probably wouldn't include the PDF unless you want somebody being able to download it because they could just save the invoice. And if you make it look nice enough, then they don't need the PDF for any reason. And then you're not having to pick one of these and have it send one of these older style invoice formats that you can't customize or do anything to other than pick the ones that are in here. Um, so chances are the invoice PDF in email is probably going to, you, you more times than not going to be checked off. And then again, remember, if, it, if you don't want it to be the default one that comes up every time you send it or when you send invoices to just automatically like click them and send them, um, then make that sure that box is known. And I skipped over it for a reason. We'll come back to estimates last. Landing page, again, name, description, subject. Marketing email, name, description, subject. You can see what's happening here. Mobile app email. There's not many other settings, other and text message. So the text message, when you type, it's got name, description, and then there's not settings, there's, I mean, subject. This is where you type the actual text message and save it. So, and so I'm gonna just send this test message and the description is um, training test text message. So we have one. And so you might say something like, hi, and you can use the personalization over here, client first name, comma. We are sending this message to say hello. Whatever. I don't know, I typed this, this is, uh, zero instead of a say hello. <laughs> Now, if I say that, it's going to have, we're going to have a text message in our list, but it's, it, when you go to save it, you're like, oh, cause I'm on the inactive tab, but it, it would show up in our list and it'll refresh and it should filter. I guess I should have tested that, but, but it'll, it, it should keep your list filtered. So if it's not in within that filter, maybe you're filtered by name, then it's not, it won't show in the list. Um, but now we have a new text test message. And if you click on that, it pulls up that same area where you can edit it. So if you clicked and I'll show you if, what happens if you do it, but if I hit con con command and click it, it's going to try to open it and it doesn't know what to do with it. So it thinks it's a, a blank document or whatever. And so if you click on using it, it's going to open and it'll, it's just going to act weird, but don't control click text messages. And you'll know if you do one because it's going to show that the screen, but those you just click regular and you do them. If you hit edit, it's going to move to that screen and it's going to change your filtered list, but you just edit it here and save it. And that's editing a text message. If does that make sense to everybody? Hopefully that does. If somebody gives me a thumbs up, that'd be cool. But if not, um, I'm going to keep, I'm just making sure text messages are slightly different because they just get handled right in here. So you can make changes and save it. All right, let's go back to the last one I skipped over, estimate documents. These are a little bit different because they include the other parts and we're not gonna spend, thanks ground care. Um, we're not gonna spend a million hours talking about just estimate document types, but and we will, but there that 
that's part of estimates. And so I don't want to spend a bunch of time into what all these mean and how all these pieces work. This is more about just documents in general, um, getting good at knowing all of them. So if we want later, we can spend a little bit more time on estimates, but I want to be able to cover a lot of the parts because a lot of the parts, as you saw, use the same pieces, um, but in the settings area. So it has name, description, and subject. Now, this is the only place the subject probably doesn't matter because it doesn't actually send this document to anyone. The estimate type, the, esti the estimate type document doesn't get sent. It has to be sent in conjunction with an estimate email, which is another document that you select from your list of documents that has to include that says, hey, we've created your estimate. And again, I'm not going to get into this because this is an estimates class, but it you have to have an estimate email that sends to your customer that says, hey, your estimate is ready, blah, blah, blah. Click on this link or view this PDF. And it's got a link to download, you know, to open the PDF and stuff. If the PDF is included, then it will be attached. Otherwise, you can include in your estimate email a link to the client portal, not client portal, the view my proposal document that, that will show because you created this estimate document. Again, there's a few steps in there, comes a little bit complicated. Um, and this isn't about estimates, but you have to have an estimate email set for the document settings, or it's not going to send for anything. Like you don't, it's not required to save it, but it's not going to send to your co customers and clients. And you would have to manually send them codes or the estimate link, excuse me, a couple different things. The estimate confirmation email, however, is sort of optional. If you're not using Pro Plus and automations to handle what happens if an estimate is accepted, then you can then send, this was like the very first automation that really worked inside Service Autopilot. You can have an estimate, an estimate confirmation email that gets sent if someone accepts your estimate, even if you're not using automations. And it might be something as simple as an email that says, hey, thanks for accepting our estimate. Someone will be in touch with you soon. Or it could be as elaborate as, hey, you, you welcome to the family or you're going to get a couple, like, here's our list of things of stuff we're going to do. And I'll show you a couple from the launch bundle, but you can send them confirmation emails that include a ton of stuff. Then this one asks, do you want to send it to the contact email by default or the billing email by default? This sends, this selects billing email by default as the default when you create a brand new one for two, two reasons. One, a lot of times your estimates get sent to so whoever gets handles the billing in, you know, a lot of commercial applications sometimes. So you could designate a different contact email and a billing email so that anything money related goes to the billing people. But this also defaults the billing email because if there's no one set as the billing email, it'll send it to the contact email instead. So if there ever is someone who needs an estimate or billing details and it's set in that box, then there's no chance that they get skipped by any means if it's not the same person as the contact email because you set this as the billing email by default. And so if the system goes to try to send it to the billing email and no one's there, it'll grab the contact email or emails and send it to them instead. So it's sort of a, 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 a safety net, if you will, that says, hey, if there was ever a time that someone else needed to get this document, now, again, it's not that hard to resend an estimate. If you send it to the wrong person and they know who to send it to, they can forward it over. It's not a huge deal, but it is a pretty, it is kind of a cool little feature that if you leave it set to use billing email and there's not a billing email, it'll send it to the contact email anyway. It's not going to not get sent. And then again, you can include or not include the PDF. And then when you do, you can save it. So that's, that's the settings for the doc, the different document types. Um, and that covers, and I'm going to drag my little thing back over so you guys can see where we're at. If anybody didn't have this or didn't, if you want to take a screenshot, but there's, we're, we're going to start getting into editing stuff here pretty soon. Cause we covered all this other stuff, covered accessing document types, the document settings and why there are other fields sometimes. Um, so yeah, let's just get into adding or editing a document.
because that's the meat of all the good stuff. And so again, you can do a couple, you can either create a brand new one or edit existing ones. And like I said, you edit existing ones by holding down command or control and clicking on it as long as it's not a text message. Um, or you can create a brand new document. And the reason I wanna show you this is because there is a different setting that comes up when you create a brand new document that you won't see when you edit it. So let's just create a, a new client email, for instance, and we'll call it like training email one. And we'll say new email so we can see how it looks, right? In the subject line, you can type this because this goes to the client. So on a Mac, if you hit control command space, it'll pull up your emoji keyboard. Not sure on a PC because I don't use one, how to get that to come up. But let's say you want something, I don't know, chickens. I just saw a chicken, let's do a chicken. Let's say you want a chicken in your subject line for whatever reason, hello world and you wanna send that to a client. This is just a test, so I'm not gonna send this to clients. But then you click save and boom, unfortunately, <laughs> if you're creating a brand new document this way, when we go back to our list, it is going to eliminate any filtering you did. So if you're creating a bunch of brand new documents, don't have a filtered list to start from. If you're editing documents, then start it, but this way. So it serves on a pilot, it's gonna give you four different starting points. And strangely enough, sometimes this won't load, other times it will. Um, I don't know what, what affects it or causes it. It's not all the time, blanket all the time, but sometimes it, this, this will sit here or it spins and you'll go back to your document list and your document's there and this hadn't loaded. But it should it's always gonna give you, unless you try to open a text message, then it only gives you the blank option, but it should always give you a couple of options, at least I think it's three, four with the blank and you can start select a starting point. And it gives you a little window here. And if my screen's not big enough, let me zoom in a little bit because I know sometimes with this, I got a like a whatever 27 inch monitor or something. So sometimes it looks really small, um, but it, it this has this has just your company name and don't feel compelled to be worried. And I'll show you why, but these are just starting points. None of this stuff is permanent. You don't have to use it. You could delete it all back down to blank if you wanted to. I almost always, I ne very seldom have I ever picked a blank document because it's literally blank starting from scratch. Like you have, you have to put everything into it and we'll get into what all that means. But you can pick one of these templates and do anything, you can delete them out, but they have good starting points a lot of times. Um, now, again, if you've used or looked at or added any of the launch bundles, one of the things I'll show you next is how to take like the, the basic template and copy that and then use that to edit, to add what you want. So you might not be starting with any of these or a blank document because it's gonna cause you, you're gonna have to edit them anyway. So if you start with one and build it and save it as a template of your own, then you just copy that one and edit it. So you're not using these as the starting point anymore. You've customized your, your, your um, You've customized your footer and your signature and everything else to say what you want, and then you can save it. You've even updated your 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 um, social your social handles because if you create this one every single time, it's going to come back here and it's not going to be filled out. And you're going to have to fill it out every time. So if you save one that you copy that has the social done, and I'll show you that in a second but it, it saves it. So I'm just good for this one, for the sake of moving on and then showing you how to edit it, it's going to, I'm just going to click the blank one and you're going to, it's going to load and it's literally going to be a blank screen. Like it's totally blank. It, there's nothing here. There is a row that's stuck up in here. And for some reason there's an HTML bot block that's, that was stuck. Um, but it's blank. Like it's literally a blank, completely blank document. And you can't do anything to it other than start adding stuff. But this is a good place for us to talk about what you can add and move into. So you could either start with one of those templates, which is basically the same as editing an existing document. If you download the launch bundle, there's existing documents and there's templates in there, quote unquote templates that you can start from. Or you can use the service autopilot ones 
and start with some stuff, or you can start with blank. So that's why we're doing this, starting from scratch, because this is totally blank. Now I'll cover the top bar really quickly, but you can print this, you can preview it, which if you preview it, it's gonna give you preview mode and show desktop and mobile, which right now that's not very helpful because there's nothing in here, but you can preview it. It doesn't always show, it's not gonna show like if you have merge tags and things like that, it's not gonna put what data is in there. So you're, you're sort of limited with the previews, but you could see what your customers would see to a degree. But that's not even as useful as sending yourself a test email. So if you click send test email, you can click send, you can click from, this is sending this document. I don't know why it's not selected, but it should load the document you're working on and send it. Um, you can insert a form, you can personalize it. You can make changes in the, in the email editor, which again, I don't know why you would, but you can choose who to send it to, CC, BCC, things like that, or just close it. You can attach a document, you can attach things. Um, sometimes when I'm on Zoom, my, my window turns into a scratch off and I have to literally get rid of the overlays by clicking and scratching, like moving my mouse over them until eventually it'll load and it goes away. Um, it's kind of a fun little trick. I don't know how it does it or why. <laughs> it's actually annoying. Um, show structure will do just that. It shows you all the rows and stuff, which again, we don't have any, so that's not as useful to show right now. But um, edit settings, that will take you back to that settings from the beginning page. You can edit them here. So let's say you you started a document and you forget, you edited one or you copied one and now you're trying to change it because it could turn into a, and you started it out and it was just a template, but now it's a, a spring upsell email for fertilization or, or aeration or something, whatever. So you want to change what the, the client, it, the email is called and the subject. You can do that from here, hit save, and it'll save that setting without having to leave the screen and go back and open it. That just is the settings. The other two buttons over here, which are kind of tucked in the corner, is close, which will do just that. And it'll ask if you want to save it beforehand every single time. Even if you've just saved it, it'll ask, do you want to save it? I would almost always hit yes, unless you don't want to save it. And that's why you're closing it. But the other button up here is the save button. And this is going to need to be your friend if you're spending a bunch of time creating a bunch of a, a document. Because... All of us have known, and if you're brand new to Service Autopilot, you don't know this, but if you've been around Service Autopilot for any amount of time, sometimes you go to click on something and the page just sits there and it won't load and it freezes. Documents are no different. And I've spent, and so many of us have probably done it, but I've spent hours editing a document and creating this really beautiful thing. And for whatever reason, I did something or I clicked one of the links and it left the page that I was on. And when I came back, it was totally blank or nothing I had done any work on was ever done. And there are a lot of times if you try to leave it in some of the browsers and they've tried, Service Autopilot's worked hard to try to make it to where if you try to leave the page and this might be one of those times, let me see if I can click on it and see, see if it goes away because it's totally blank. But watch, if I click invoices, nothing was saved on that document. I made, if I made any changes, now it's, if I go back here and I go back to documents and I find our new test document, which was called training email one, and I see the settings are there, yes. But now if I hit command and open it and I open that document, it's back to blank. So it never, I didn't save anything. Nothing that I changed or did or made to it is was saved and it let me leave the page. So this save button is going to be your friend. If you don't have auto save on Word or anything else, if you ever got used to doing it, come up here. It's not like Report Center. It's not like uh, you know. It's uh, it's like it's just like automations. Um, you have to save it. So if you if I don't say every single step, but maybe every five minutes, just remember to come over here and click save. And it's just going to do that right there. It's just going to run through it. It's going to save it. You don't have to type in a bunch of stuff. You don't have to hit a name. You just save it and it'll save it. Because otherwise, any work that you did, if it lets you leave the page, it's not going to it's not going to honor it and keep it. Um, and so just be mindful of that. All right. Any questions? We've been I've been talking for almost an hour. Does anybody have any questions or need to take a break? 
generally I don't, I won't stop entirely for a break. If some one person needs to stop, um, just cause it's only a two hour session. It's not like it's a full day, all day thing. Um, every once in a while I might have to run to the bathroom, but I don't right now. So, um, does anybody have any questions about the stuff that's been covered? Um, cause if not, we'll start getting into these, the, 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 some of the, the, the top areas and show, start looking at how to add, add content and stuff. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, cool. Then I'm going to sip some more of my delicious coffee. Okay. So then now the meat and the bones of, of document editing. That is creating documents. And so you can see there's a row up here. Like I said before, there is a little bit of HTML content. Um, I'll get into what that is and what it means. Um, I think that was just added, so it's not totally blank, but it, there there is a row here. Um, but if you click on any of these three top headings, and I'm gonna start with the settings because this gives you some general general options for this entire document. You can set the content area width. So it defaults to 900 pixels, but then you could you could scroll bar it down. So if you're making a mobile only document, or whatever, and you want the content area to be small, you can adjust that. Now it defaults to 900. It should stay at 900 probably most of the time because it'll fill that full box. I do wish that you could make them wider because a lot of screens and different things are like 1280, whatever. You but it it's it sets to 800, 900. That's the highest it'll go. But you could make it smaller if you wanted to for whatever reason. Again, if you're making a mobile only document. You could you could create that here by just creating the content box smaller, but chances are you're not going to mess with that slider very often. So leave it there. Content area alignment. So you if you want it to center by default, it's going to center your content area. If you wanted it to be left, it's going to fill the left side of the box. Now, the reason that's important is if I change the background color to let's say red then it's going it, to, the box content is going to be over to the left. So it's not going to fill the center of your screen. So chances are, again, you're going to want to leave that at center. Then you can change any of these to whatever you want. Um, if you want it transparent, so it shows whatever background, fine. Otherwise, you can start picking colors and it'll add in sort of the not like, I don't want to say weirdly, but it'll it'll show like your previous few used colors um, if as you add them. And so it'll start to add the box. Like if I click that blue, go back to red, um, you can you can pick any of those colors. Now, if you click on the box and you but you know the hex code. So let's say you want like a a grayish color, like I think F4, F4, F4 is a gray. Yeah. So if you know the hex code, you can copy it and paste it in here. It does need the, the hashtag or the, the pound sign in front of it. So if you don't copy it with it, then just, just get rid of those six characters. Otherwise, make sure you know make sure you copy it with the hashtag. And then it's not really a hashtag. We want it for this case, but make sure that symbol's in there. Um, if you just type in, my, let's look F4, F4, F4 and hit enter. Yeah. Or F, F, F. If you click out of there, see how transparent F, F, F. Let's see if that fills it. No. Um, the point being here is it, that'll default the background color. Now the content area background color, you can set to whatever you want to. And it's gonna fill the area around, just around your content, but still within that boxed window. So the background color is gonna be the background for your entire, for your entire document, okay? But it's gonna fit, the content area is gonna be just for the content within that area. So you can have separate ones of those, or you could match them. Then you can set the default font to a couple of different ones. I will caution you in saying that there are some you could select from this box that aren't available in the text boxes in other places. And so sometimes they won't match. 
and it'll, I think it almost always defaults back to Verdana. Um, and then you could set your link color here too. So if you, if you add a link in text or anywhere else, you can set what color that link is. So if you're, if you send a document out and let's say you have a link to a YouTube video or some, you know, something in there that you added a link and it's adding, it's adding a weird color and you're not sure why, but you want an orange or something like that. You can come in here and set the link color. Those are the settings that are settable, adjustable for the entire document in, in general. Now, each of the content areas are going to have their own settings and some of it will override it and things like that. But this is sort of the default for the, the, the whole entire document. The next thing is where you start adding in pieces. Now, this row, I can tell you from just experience, this is a single column row. And you can tell that too, because there's no splits or breaks. But if you just click one of these and drag it and pull it over and find a place where it says drag it here. If I click and drag it and leave it there where it didn't say drag here, it's not gonna add it. So I have to click it and add it where it says dra drag it here. Now, if you notice, it expanded my document. It kept that the background the same and it kept the content area the same color. But now it added to a row with two columns. And we'll get into the adjusting the column size and stuff like that in a second. But you can do any of them. You can start adding in all of these different, this one's split in the middle. This is a starting point for that. But why, if I show you something, I can click and I can flip that around to the other way just by changing the settings. So they're just a starting point. They don't have to stay there forever if i want to make that three and nine to match this one up here you can do if you've created a, a row at all you can do anything you basically want even if you wanted to get rid of a column i could delete the column and now it's just a split row if i wanted to add in two three four new columns i can do that from the row itself so it's not that you have to have these these options and that's the only choice you get. They're just a starting point. So you don't have to click that button. Like if you wanted a six column row, you could add that really quickly and then make adjustments and add content to each of those columns. Does that make sense? You're not locked into this. It's just a starting point and it makes it really useful. So I'm just gonna leave a couple of these in here just so we have some details and you can see and we'll make some adjustments. Um, so that's rows, adding in rows. And so you need a row for everything. If you want to adjust the row background color. So this one's trans set to transparent. So it's gonna pull in the, the, the setting from the company, the, like the document settings. So if I go to this row and I click on it, it's gonna pull up the row properties. And so I can duplicate it, I can delete it, and I can get rid of that properties menu, which closes it out. So I have to click back on it. Now, if I want this row, let's say I want this row to have a blue background just for the row, then you change that to blue and it's not transparent anymore and it overrides the background of that. If I wanted this content area to then be gray instead of green, you can play with these adjustments in these settings. So how this row looks, and let, now let's preview this. So if I click on preview, there's nothing in there, but you see how these are gray and that's blue and that's gray and that's green. Like that's because of the settings we've set. And if I click and I drag this row up here, for instance, and now we preview it. Now that row with the blue outside and the, gr and the gray inside is going to stand out. And when you have content in it, you'll see why that makes a difference and how it changes. But you can play with any of that. And on mobile, it doesn't have the, any of the outside stuff because it's really small, so it's not going to show. And the desktop even matters based on the, the email client that you're using too, what shows on the outside. So you have to be a little bit careful with what's showing here. Um, estimate documents will show different things. So you just play with what it is and look at what it's what's being sent and how it's being utilized inside the inside the. Um, What's the word inside the the document you're using itself? But this this you can play with a lot of those different things. 
So if I go back to transparent for the row and the column it was, if I make that transparent too, then it's going to use the, it's going to use the, um, it's going to use the content area. So that one will fill in with whatever set for the, the settings one. Then you can round the corners which if you click more options, it'll give you the ability to adjust the top left, top right, bottom left and bottom right. So if I crank this one up, it just changes the top right corner to, to thing. You can type numbers in here. So if I change that to hundred, it'll curve that row. And let's say you want to do the bottom right 100 and it'll make that row like that. So it makes like a little ellipsis thing. Now, if you didn't want it all to be, if you wanted it all four corners to be the same, then you could you could just turn the more options off and it'll round all of it by whatever you type in here and change that. Um, so you could have like a middle section with rounded corners in the middle. Um, if you clear it back out, it'll go back to zero. Um, you could add a border. So let's leave this to a hundred and we'll add a border that's black and we'll make it like a two point, or let's say we'll make it like a 10 point. Um, again, you can make it solid, dotted, or dashed, which you can play with all of this. I'm not sure why all of these you'd wanna have and do. Um, again, you can do more options and then decide you could do top, right, bottom. So like if you wanted the bottom to be blue for whatever reason, the top and the top and the bottom to be blue and the sides black, like you can play with this however you want. Now the content should try to fit into that box, but you get the point. You can play with all of these. I, I'm not sure entirely why you would want all of this, you know, these options, but you can have them. And if you click that box, it comes back, make it transparent, go back down to zero and then it goes away. So there is none. This one, make it back to zero and it stays the same. Um, do not stack on mobile. So you, if you don't want, when the mobile shows, if you don't want these columns stacked, which again, I don't know why you wouldn't, because then it would just be like a, a really small box that's still four columns wide, but let's say it was like numbered or something, you could say don't stack and then it won't stack. You could turn that on or off. Um, if you wanted to add a background image, you could add a background image by either adding a URL or click change image. And so let's say we wanted to add this, it would add the background image to that row. Again, it's gonna add it to the, the content area, apply it by default. But if you clicked row, you could add it to this row. So if you did have grass, let's say, and you, you wanted to put that on all of your rows. Now, unfortunately you can't do that for the row or for the entire document and make one background image, but you could, you could do it for, a couple of rows and so you might set row and then change the image and you could add that picture again and if, if it was a uniform picture then you could have grass on the on the content area um if you just wanted it off you just click on it and you can turn it off turn it back on and unfortunately it's gone and you have to click it again but you can then once it's there you can then choose to do um fit to background repeat center um, and so there's some other options that are set when you have that turned on that you can do. The next really cool feature is hide on. And so if you're sending an email to people and you want to hide it on desktop or you want to hide it on mobile, you can do that. And the reason I say this is cool is, is, is it becomes absolutely essential because there is some issue or something going on and I've, I know Service Autopilot knows about it. Um, I don't know if there's any plans to ever fix it or do anything about it, but for whatever reason, if you have multiple column emails that get sent, um, it's mostly on iPhones, but it's definitely on mobile. I've seen it on, come up on some Android phones, but it's definitely on all iPhones. That if you have a split row, so there's multiple columns, it only shows the leftmost item first like normal 
and then it makes everything else like basically one character long. So let's say this box over here had a bunch of text in it, like paragraphs of text. It would be this super long one, one, one thing wide. So if you ever got, if you ever sent out an email or anything and your customer's like, man, it was all weird. It was super long. I couldn't read it. There was font over on the side. You're probably using split rows. And so what we ended up having to do, and I built a bunch of this stuff for the RBS emails that we've, we've been sending out for those, for those emails that you get reminding you about these trainings and stuff. Those have multiple columns and there's pictures on the side. But if you look at it on your mobile, it stacks and it becomes a single, a single comp, like a single stackable block. But when you're sending an email that shows up on a desktop, you don't really want that. So what I ended up doing was I built an email at the top that was all for, for desktop and I hid it on mobile. So let's say these were the top two or maybe not the top box because it's centered anyway, but anything split column, I would just hide on mobile. And then I would, I rebuilt below it a single column row that had everything stacked already. And I would just hide those on desktop. And so you'd have two, basically two emails inside of an email. And the reason that's important, and I say it's a really cool feature, and I'm glad that they even allow it, is because you don't, you, you want, most people are viewing your stuff on mobiles anyway these days. And so if you're building only for desktop and it shows up weird on a mobile by any chance, then you're not going to be communicating effectively to your clients. You're more than likely going to want to show everything and not necessarily hide it on the desktop, but build it for a mobile view and then build a desktop view only. So you might have one or two column rows that have split columns, and those are the only ones you show on desktop. So those are hidden on mobile. Everything else is built with a single column with mobile in mind. That might be a better use of how you build it. Um, because more people than not are utilizing mobile devices. And so if it's not stacking them automatically and doing the, what it's supposed to, then it's not working right. And so you probably just need to lit, you know, hide it on mobile, the, the split column ones, the split column rows and just build it out separate. So it's only showing the items that way. And if that doesn't make sense, I can go deeper into it, but hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Then I already showed you this, but then you can adjust. So this column is right in this row right now has five columns, right? One, two, three, four, five. Let's say I want to get rid of one and it's this one here in the middle. I can just click on it and it selects which column and you can adjust the settings. So you can adjust padding and borders for all for, and the background for all of the columns. So let's say for whatever reason, if you wanted this column to have a column background color of not, I already have green but blue, and then this column, you wanted red, and this column, you wanted purple, and this, co this column, you wanted, I don't know, orange. I don't know why you would do this, but let, let's say you wanted all those different columns, you can do that absolutely, and then based on what content's in there is what will show, right? But let's say this one you decided, I don't want this one at all, I just want a three column. Well, it's going to delete out and it's going to try to fill that gap. So you might have to adjust it because those aren't even. And then you're like, well, those aren't even. So then you're like, all right, well, then you can just click and drag them and try to make them all even if you want them all even. If let's say you want, again, you want to delete it to, to whatever column, then you could just click and drag and say the smallest you can make any of these split ones is two. So you could have eight, two, two, but it's going to add up to 12, basically all the way across. However, you split it. Um, if I split it back to the middle, it's bigger in the middle and then two on the sides, you can do that too. But let's say again, you want to just delete all those out and delete them out. Now it saves that middle, that middle column. Now there's only one column. And you can change any of the settings. If you, again, if you wanted to add a new column, it'll you can add a new column and save it or whatever. Okay. 
All right, well, that's rows, basically adding in all of the settings and different things you can do for each row. Um, I'm not gonna get into a ton of the padding stuff. It starts with more options, but you can add five to all of it really easily. If you don't want left and right padding, um, you can change the right padding, left padding. You can do whatever you, oh, the highest you can go is 60, I forgot. Um, but it'll, you can add 60 to all of it. Can you do 60, only 60 to the top? Yeah. So you can go 60 and 60. So you could create a content area that's spaced out. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, maybe you want that, that's your heading and it offsets and it stays that color, you know, match it to your brand, do whatever. Um, but you can build a, you can build padding around it up to 60 points, um, for each thing. And then the border would show, so I'm gonna turn it off for more options so it shows everywhere, but the border on this, and if we don't make it transparent, let's make it black, the border shows on the content, like the row settings, not the content settings. The content area has its own border. So you could set its own border here. Oh no, that's both. Oh, because of the padding, sorry. It added to it, wow, that's weird. Okay. Um, yeah, so it adds to it. All right, any questions there? That's rows. All right, well then let's start looking at content. Now, depending on what type of document you're creating, you're gonna see different content options. Mostly just, there's only one other one. There's a um, dynamic content that gets added for invoice emails and estimate documents. And we'll look at that when we edit a couple. Um, but you can add any amount or any number of any of these. So an image is just that, it's an image. So we'll click and drag it here. Again, I don't, it, and it defaults to this, drop your file here or browse. So if you had a file, you could drag it and drop it and it would load it and add to it. Um, otherwise we can load it and I'll show you that in a second. You can add a button. So if you click and drag and it adds a button and it will default to this button type. Um, you can click and add a divider. So the divider, a lot of times will go on a row and you can drag it here. And if you notice, it's gonna be really light, but if I click on the divider, I can change the color to maybe make it black. And then you can make it as thick as you want. And you can also set the width. So if you just want a, a small divider, a 90% divider, you can align it right, you can align it left, you can make it left, you can add padding to it, you can do whatever you want and you can hide it on mobile too. It starts padding on all 10 points on all sides and goes up and down by fives. I think again, the max is 60, um, but you can build a divider pretty easily. The other cool thing is if you click more options, you can then adjust. So maybe you don't want the left and the right to have padding, because you want to fill that all the way through. So this is all the way to 100 with no padding, but you want a little bit more at the top and the bottom to make it distinct in between. You know, you're making a, a, a big division between the two, the two rows. Um, you could build that out. Now that's built and saved in this row. Um, you could add it to its own blank single column row. Now, if I click and I drag this down here, the divider is going to divide just that one section. So if you notice, it's not over here too, it's only right here. And so you might put, let's say an image above it and then some text below it. So we'll put it down below. And so the divider is spaced in between. Now this one, you might not want 25 points. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't want, maybe you want five and five top and bottom. Now that's divided. Maybe you don't want it so thick. Maybe you only want it four points or two points. So you have a, an image with text below it and you can manipulate that. And then there's a button over here, which this button you might want padding, you know, padding on the top of this row so that the button's down here in the middle. Like there's all kinds of stuff you can do to play with how the content looks inside of it. And I'm not making this look nice. I'm just showing you how all this works right now. Um, there's a divider. You can add a social icons menu to it and it defaults to all four of these but when you click on them then it gives you options for all of these and you can pick any of these buttons that you want that so if you click on the the icon properties you can pick 
the colored ones like you could click and drag and scroll i mean click and scroll for whatever icon you want to use so if you want the back black black background or a grayish background then you can set the the order by clicking and dragging those three lines so if i want facebook down here you can click click and drag those if you want more options so you can have alternate text so if it if it had said twitter or you hover over it you can have it say whatever you want it to say um you can't change these four icons you can add a new icon and pick one of these other ones so if you wanted to add tiktok if you wanted to add whatever this one telegram <laughs> i don't know what that is um if you wanted to add snapchat you can add any of these icons or delete any of the ones you don't use so you could add to them um if each one's set for more options so you can set the alternate text or the title um but then here's where you add in your unique links to each of them and you would add those and save them but if you add it any other time so if i go back to content and I add a new social box up here, it's gonna to be totally different. And if you click on it, they're all gonna be blank. So if you're creating, like I mentioned before, if you're creating brand new documents and you're adding social to them, you're gonna to have to fill that out every time. Whereas if you had a template and you saved the social and then you copied that template, the stuff that you're gonna reuse every time could be in there on every single document. And again, we're gonna, we'll get into that just a little bit because we're almost done with all this. Icon spacing, so you can space them out further. Um, and then you can add padding to all this stuff and then you can hide it on social or whatever. Um, so that's social content. Um, HTML, I'm not going to get into that a ton. I'll show you a little bit when, when I look at doing an estimate document because there's a couple of cool things you can do in there. But HTML won't work as well in emails. But if you had code you wanted to add that would be able to be managed on through through the Internet, um, now, if you add HTML to a bunch of emails, it's not going to process appropriately. Um, so if you're trying to do something like a YouTube video and you want it to show up, you can put a, 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 a thumbnail or a picture of the, of the YouTube video or maybe a thing that says press here to play. And when you click on it, you would add it. You, but in that, you would add an image and then add a link to the image. And then when they clicked it, it would open the YouTube page. It won't play in, in a YouTube video in the email. Whereas in an estimate document, you can make it play a YouTube video and I'll show you how to, I'll show you that in a second. Or, yeah, maybe not a second, but in a little bit. Um, but text is just that it's text. So if I click and I add some text below this picture, then when you add the text, it's going to, you can fill it here and then the text editor takes over. So let's say you want to make this text centered and size 58. And then you click on it and you're like heading here. Oops, can't spell heading. Heading here. And if you highlight it, let's say you want maybe the text color to be white because it's on a green background, whatever. You can play with all the text. Make sure you cover. Um, one of the cool things about adding text is you can also, once it's back to 14, you can add merge tags. And those merge tags, will take the editing that you do. And so any of the merge tags or customization fields or your custom fields that you link um, will show in here. Now, some of them depend on what type of, like the merge tags are gonna show, um, like the signature line. If you add the signature line to a client email, it's not gonna do the same things it does when you have an estimate email. So there's a lot of stuff that you can click and add that you might not want. Um, the company logo will add your company logo merge tag and it'll use your company logo settings that you have, but it won't let you format it. And so you might wanna just create your own company logo. And we'll show you that when we edit a couple of documents and you can browse it, but you can have, um, you can have a, a, a photo. So let's just click that one and insert it. Because when you click the photo, you can either have it set to auto width, or if you turn that off, then you can adjust the width of the of the the, the your dot your your image. So if your image is huge, which it needs should and needs to be for it to be super clear, um, you could then make it smaller if you need to. You can make it left aligned, right aligned, centered, all that kind of stuff. You can apply effects to the images. So if you click on that, it's going to pull up the image editor. And you can do stuff with it. So if you wanted to crop it, 
and make it smaller, cut out some of the top and the bottom. You can make those adjustments. Maybe you just want the dog's head with no poop emoji. You can, you can save that image and apply it. You could make it four, three, you could, there's a couple of options you can do like just by default and then click and drag it. But if you apply it and then save it, it'll save that image to, to your, your, it, it'll adjust that image and save it. And so when you use it, it'll save it. You could add a text shape. You could like, there's a bunch of stuff you can do inside the image editor. Um, I will say it's not, it's, it's, it's a cool image editor in that it'll, you can add some really easy stuff. Um, it's not super advanced in the sense of um, it being like the best image editor in the world. So if this is the only way you're editing your images, you're going to be limited on what you can do, but it does add a ton of really cool things. Um, the, the shapes, stickers, you can add some thought bubble things. Like you can play with this a little bit and see exactly what you want to, uh oh, cancel. Why won't that go away? So you can change the color. I can't get it to go away. All right, I'm leaving it. Um, I couldn't, I, it, it wasn't deleting, but you can add text, draw, transform, crop. You can do a bunch of stuff. You can add corners to it. So you could do that and save it. You could do some image editing in, right here inside the document editor. Again, I would limit the amount of time you're spending doing that, but if that's where you want to edit images, then go for it, edit some images. You can add alternate text to it. You can also do click a link if, if, if do something. So you can have it open a web page, send an email, make a call or send an SMS if this image is clicked. So th this is useful because it might you might have an image that says click here to call us or click here to send us an email or whatever. If you say click here for something and somebody clicks on it, it's gonna do whatever this action is. And so if you're sending a URL because it opens a web page, if you send an email, it'll say mail to with subject and body. If it says make a call, you can put in a telephone number. And then if it says send an SMS, it'll send a text message pre-filled with this message type. Um, so those are really cool ways that you can incorporate documents and communication into your emails um, just by using an image. So if you created an image that looked like a button or whatever, you could put that in there. There's the, the possibilities are seriously limitless um, on how you can use images and then those four those four options, it becomes really cool. Um, text is pretty straightforward as far as content properties and settings. You can change the, the default text color here in the link colors. You can change the line height and then the letter spacing and then padding on the block. But the editor itself handles a lot of the other stuff. So if, let's say you wanted this one highlighted, you might click this and then change that to like a yellow, save it and then it'll highlight the box. Um, you can add in paragraphs, so it gives bullet points. Um, you can do numbering, like there's a bunch of stuff you can do. Um, this one might you might want left adjust, you know, justified. I don't, I'm not really sure entirely why when you number the numbers, it doesn't show the number when you're looking at it. Let me see if it shows it when you preview it. No, it doesn't. Um, I. I'm fairly confident. I should have tested this before I said it. I just thought of it as I was looking at this, but I think it, it, it the, the, these numbers will, uh, will, uh, they'll honor the for text formatting when you do them. I'm not sure, certain though. Test it. Send yourself an email and see what it looks like. Um, all right. So that's text. A button. When you click on the button, you're going to get, button properties and these are kind of cool because you can then adjust and customize the button a thousand ways which is neat but you can make the button do something and it's those same four options so you can open a web page send an email call or send a text message so if you select any of those it's going to give you those options most of the time you're going to do open a, a a page and maybe it's a link to your client portal or <clears throat> call us now or whatever um, you can auto with the button. 
and it'll it'll fill it based on I don't know what the auto setting is, but you can you can adjust it to full width, part width, whatever you want to play with it that on. It, I think it set, starts to fifty percent with auto width. Maybe it just fits nicely in between, so it's like, uh, probably like a third size to three, you know to fit. Um, if you don't want to auto with it, you can select it global font, or you can change the font for just this button. So let's say I want that one to be a totally different font. Font weight is bold. Um, you can change the font size and it changes the whole button size. If you want to change the background color to like a red, so it stands out, you can do that. Um, you can change the text color to green or white or transparent, which would be useless. Um, you can align the button left or right into the box. You can change the line height, which isn't as useful um, because then it just changes the padding on the button. But if you wanted to, if it was multi-layer, letter spacing, text direction, which again, I don't know if that's not really changing anything. Um, border radius. So if you wanted a more rounded button, thought you could click and hold, but you got to click it each time. So if you wanted a more rounded button, you can do that. And then you can change the padding. So if the left and the right, whatever, if you wanted to change it all at once, you could turn that off. Uh, you could add a border to the button. So let's say you wanted a white border around it, to stand out a little bit more. You could change that. And then the block options down here is where you can add padding to the entire block, not just the inside part of the button. So this will add padding to the top and the bottom and all the sides um, to around the button. So again, if you wanted the button to be centered on that picture, you could add some padding to the top only. Still only goes up to 60, but it, you could move it around and manipulate it based on your, your document settings. Okay, so that's buttons. Um, let's see what else. We did social, we did divider button image text. Um, HTML, I'm not gonna get into on this plain document just because I'll show you on an estimate document because then we might be able to show some content on one of the estimates. I'll have to look, we might run out of time, but if not, um, I'll still go over it, but you can add HTML to it. Any questions there? Again, let's see if it lets it leave. So we made a ton of changes and I haven't saved it once. Let me go and click away. Watch, if I totally click away, it's gone. It, it, I guarantee you when we come back, it's gonna be our blank document. So if I go back to documents, I'm gonna close that one out because I'm back here. Training email one. So if I click on that, hello world, I'm gonna open it on its own. Watch what happens. I come back and that thing's blank. So you, all I did was leave the page. I clicked on the, on the, on the tab and left and it didn't save anything, any of those changes we made. So save that thing, save it every, every couple of minutes, every five minutes. If you're working on a real document now, I sort of did that on purpose so that we could have it. I could show you again and reemphasize the point, but save it. Make sure you get in the habit of saving it along the way. Cause if you, somebody calls and you add a new client, whatever, you, you move to a new screen off of the menu and don't think about it and it moves that document. Now, one thing that is good, and I reminded you before, if you're, if you're command or control clicking these things and you're opening them separately, so I'm gonna open all three of these documents separately, there's only a chance that you're gonna lose one of those if you do something with it, right? Because then you're, you're not necessarily changing, you're not necessarily making that change or, or you're, you may not leave it. You might come back to here and then open it and do something different. So if you're on the edit document, you know not to click on it, but I would still save it. Get in the habit of saving it. Because even if you come over here and move it, it might not reload that page, but if something freezes or you have, your thing resets and it does leave the page, it doesn't save. So just make sure you save it. And I'm going to keep reiterating that. Um. All right. Well, then let's look at, we're going to edit this document really quickly, a couple of these really quickly. And then we're going to do... Um, just because it, it makes it easier. So let's say, for instance, you wanted to open, and this is the document called Launch Bundle 01 at Email Template. And so I know that because I remember what it was, but 
you you can see that from the settings too. So if you click edit settings and you're like, okay, I'm not gonna call this the launch bundle anymore. I'm just gonna delete that out. And I'm just gonna call this email template. Now I added this to it, but it says blank template with header and footer. And I put these stars in here and says add subject. So if you ever tried to send it to somebody <clears throat> by accident and there was no subject ever saved, you would notice it pretty easily. But we've had people, and I've done it myself where I've sent the template out or a document I forgot to change and edit that. So always remember to add a subject when you're gonna save it. The other thing I put it in here too, don't forget to add subject. But this is where you would type the content of your document also. Um, although I would make the case a lot of times of adding a separate row. So I might I would probably drag down here and add another row and then add a new text box to this row to add in my content. And I would just delete out this part that says, don't forget to add a subject. So that if you add in your content, then it doesn't change. You're not in, in danger of or changing the high client name or your, your signature. Um, to edit the logo, it's super easy. It just says drop your logo here, which again, you can click and drag and drop it, or you just change image and you find a logo. Um, I think the only one they had in here was the service autopilot. Yeah, that one's not gonna work because um, I think it's SVG, but let's just do like a poop scoop logo. And we're not gonna do full width and we're going to lower it down to 20 percent because it's a really big image so you could change that to any image you want make the changes if you wanted to say hey client first name every time this one here looks like it's got no nope, it's got the appropriate number of spaces um thank you user first name company name company address city state zip if you want that in here, if you just want this to say, hey, thank you, company name and your and the user's first name, then delete out those, those extra merge tags and save it. Now this document is saved with your image. Let's say down here you had a divider. So let's add in another row and we're gonna add in a divider so that it divides it. And then below that, we're gonna add one more row and in that row, we're gonna put our social stuff. So let's just say we don't use Twitter. We don't really want LinkedIn. Let's say we do, we're on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And I like, for this use, I like these buttons. You Again, you can adjust them whatever you want. Now, if I click on this and I add in Facebook dot blah, 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 Instagram slash TikTok slash whatever, or if it's a dot, I don't remember what all of them are, but if you save those and you save this document, now it's gonna be saved. And if I copy this, it's gonna copy all of these pieces. So let me close out of this one. And I come back to the admin documents and I'm gonna and I'm gonna refresh this page because I want to show you that it changed. See how the zero one jumped up to the top? It starts with zero zero, goes to zero one, zero two, zero three, all the way up, and then it starts numbering the rest of the way. Um, the zero is important because unfortunately, if you type one and then email and then you type 11 or 12 or 13 or 14, then the one comes up, but then 20, like if the numbers are weird, the zero one, zero two, zero three, otherwise the two is below the, the 12 and 19s. And then it starts before 20, if it's not zero two, don't ask me why. Um, but zero one and zero zero would be before that. And zero, zero, zero would be before that. So you can, you can adjust what shows in your list in what order, but zero one email template. So if I open that one now, it's gonna be saved with our document heading picture that we added, client first name. Don't forget to add a subject, which I didn't add because it's still the template. Here's a text box that you can add. Here's our social stuff. And if I click on it, here it is. So if I close that and I, and I copy it, so I go to copy and it says, yes, you wanna copy it. Now it makes zero one email template copy. So when I click on that, it's gonna pull up the, the document settings and I'm gonna change the name of this to whatever it is. So instead of zero email one copy, I'm gonna call it training. 
And the subject here is going to be go get some training. And now I save it. Now on my list, it's 01 email template training. It's still there. And if I needed to, I should have changed the description, but you can change that later. But now if I open it and I edit it, then I can change whatever I want. I'm going to get rid of this box because I know I added a subject, but it was in there to remind me. I can add in whatever content I want. So let's just go and find some lorem ipsum. This is just text generator. And I'm just going to copy a paragraph of text. Well, I don't know why it's whatever. Copy. Nope, come back here. I'm going to paste it in there. Why do we use this? Save it. Just to add some text, right? So you can see it's different. But if you look, it saved our social stuff in there the way it needs to be saved. If you had a phone number, um, com username, company name, I'm not sure what that got added in for, but we'll see. And now I saved this document. Now, if I come back to my document list and I refresh it, I'm going to close that one out just so we can make sure it's all different. Now, if I open this training one or sent, if you sent it or did anything with it, now it's saved, but the, the blank template is still blank and you can copy it again. And so you just rinse and repeat. You keep building out, starting with the template and then just make it into all your other documents which is essentially kind of what we did, what I did when I created the launch bundle. I had, you know, some starting points and then you just added stuff to it. But those are good starting points because you could copy that one. And that might even be what you end up doing is you go through and you copy each of those. And if you notice like this one, the, the row has three. If you don't like that, you can change it. If you don't like the orange. Um, if you don't want any of the other stuff, then you can, you can make changes to any of those documents. Okay. All right. So the last thing I want to show you or look at, because we're running, we're getting close to the end of the time is estimate documents and how it adds that and in invoice emails, how it adds the dynamic content field, as well as if we add some HTML, what happens there, um, which I think we should still have some time, but um, so yeah, let's go look at one of those. So I'm going to open up an estimate email, which I'm going to change, check the inactive ones. Um, so yeah, that's where those welcome letters are, but I'm going to create, I'm going to, I'm going to make the weekly, the new landscaping and the residential invoice email. I'm going to make those active again so that we can open them and look at them. So we have the launch bundle estimate email, new landscaping estimate. So I'm going to open that one. And I'm going to open up the invoice email. See if these load. Now my coffee is cold. It's not quite iced, but if you were wondering. All right. So Here's an estimate email that I created and sent to our, to added to the launch bundle. Um, I added the orange so it stood out, but obviously again, you can adjust any of the colors and set the content of each row. If you notice it gets progressively darker, but you can change those to match your company branding. Um, the premise behind this was, hey, let's make these estimates really simple, one, two, three. Choose your desired options and electronically sign. Add your payment method using the secure email you'll receive, which the automation sends a form link that says, hey, update, update your credit card info. Or you could alternately, if you're not using automations, um, again, Ready Business Systems has a really bunch of cool documents. We don't use this document, but we, we've we built out a similar one process that makes it easy in the automations um, send afterwards that ask for it and you can send repeated reminders. If you don't, if you won't schedule work before you have a card on file, you can make it. So it sends a reminder every couple of days or however often. Um, so if you're not signed up with us and you want to have those talks, then again, schedule, I'll put, put the link, but schedule a meeting with Steve 
Um, our he's our sales guy, and he I don't I don't know why I use quotes when I say that, but Steve will Steve will get you set up with some ideas and options and stuff that we offer. And then step three, that's it. Confirmation will be sent. Now this isn't a, a pitch for the the um document, but if you don't want any of that, let's say for instance you just want to delete it and just send the, the info. Get rid of it. Make it as as custom as you want, or make it not. But come in here, add your logo, stuff like that. Um, I'm going to not do that. So I'm going to undo that just so it stays in here. What I wanted to show was two things. The, the, this content now has one more box and it's called dynamic content, which is what this is. On an estimate and an invoice email, you can add grids that pull data from that document type. So if you're sending an invoice, it'll send the invoice information, or if you're sending an estimate, it'll send the estimate grids. Now, they are making some changes, and I know there's a beta version of estimates out there that some people have access to that they're going to allow you to have multiple grids and things like that, that eventually you'll have more details. But right now, you can only add one grid, and you have to select that grid from your um from your list of grids i'm not going to get into estimate grids because it's a whole estimate thing but when that grid shows the estimate you can you, it'll show proper estimate data i'll create a quick estimate so you see it but this should show the estimate grid um i'm just going to add this because i i want to make sure it has at least a grid that works sometimes if it comes in from the launch bundle because of the way this gets appended with the marketplace marketplace, if the name doesn't match exactly, or you change the name of the grid, you have to come in and reload this one. There's some there's some connection points there. So I'm just gonna change it to residential estimate grids just cause I'm, I'm sure I'm probably, I'm confident that it should work. Um, and then the signature line, but that's where you pick the grid. There's not many other content properties other than you pick the grid and you can change the grid settings. The last thing I wanna add is I'm gonna add a row down here to the bottom and I'm gonna add in some HTML text because what I want to add into here is a YouTube video, which I'm just gonna go look and I'm gonna look up YouTube and I'm gonna search for a Ready Business Systems. ready business systems and i'm just going to grab one of these non two hour long videos just to make sure maybe it's the session five preview let's say all right i don't want it to play but if i go to share and i click the embed option so it's going to give you all of this info if i click copy so if you have your own youtube channel which you should you have video store there and you want to show one in your estimates so maybe it's hey this is what it's like to work with us this is our this is our team whatever it is Go to YouTube, click on it, click the share button on the embed, come over to the video settings, embed video, just click copy. And it's going to copy all of that code. Come back to your estimate document and over here in this box, select all the text and then paste that in. And then we're going to hit save. Now it's not going to show anything in this box. You're not going to see it typed in here. But when I save it later, so sometimes what we do, what we'll do is we'll have. Uh, why did it go away when I clicked out of it? Um, it went away when I clicked out of it. Sorry. Harold, are you trying to say something or are you just saying hi? Um, it's not saving when I go out of it. Settings, content. All right, let me try a different option here. Um, it didn't save it for some reason. Shoot. All right, hold on a second. I have one in another account. Give me one second. Um. 
Okay, I'm gonna give me, I'm gonna bring this out. I'm gonna show structure because that'll help this row in this HTML box. I'm gonna paste this in here. I think what I'm gonna do, I'll add something else to it, but paragraph. Um, video here. I thought you could just add the thing, but I don't think you can and then save it. I think you have to have something else in the box with it. So yeah, I think you have to add a paragraph video here. I don't know why it's not saving it. Every time I click out of it, it's not saving my pasted picture. Thank you. This is a different video, but let me see if this one works. It's not saving when I paste the embed code in here anymore. I don't know why. Um, let's click save and see what it does. Document save. Now if I click out of it. Okay, you maybe have to hit save first. I, I'm not sure. Let me go back to the my YouTube and I want this because I want this picture. Let me see if that's what it was. So video here. Sorry, I, I've added these before. I don't think I've ever had to save them there. Let me hit save here first. Click out. Every time I was clicking on the box, yeah, it's not it's not saving that iframe picture. Every time I click out of it, it's gone. <clears throat> Copy. Let me see if it gets any of these to work. I'll put this one back in. <clears throat> hey, John. Yeah. Hey, I had a quick question about the embed codes. When when you was talking about saving that, yeah. th does it save it just for that one in particular document? Or can you save that like to queue it up where you can use it for any kind of document whenever you pull it up, or do you have to actually go in and paste that embed code every time you make a new document? So if you saved it, like I was mentioning before, if you saved it as <clears throat> into one of your templates and this, this box was in there all the time, I don't know why it's not saving that YouTube one for whatever reason, this one here, it's not saving in, it's not saving in the HTML, the, the I, the iframe, code every time I paste it and leave the box and come back out of it. Um, honestly, I'm not sure. I, I have no idea what, I don't know if it's a bug, if it's something's not working. Um, I'm in Firefox. I don't think it's a Chrome thing. Um, I'm going to have to test it and figure it out. Maybe I'll put some notes in the comment when I post this, but to your point, Mike, the, the answer to that is if it was saved in a document and you copy that document. So let's say it is a video you want to show up on every one of your documents, put it in that template, the email template that I said to create. And then when you copy that template, it, sh it should copy that code over with it. Um, but otherwise, no, like if, if I opened up a different document and I tried to add something to it and I added that HTML box, then you have to paste it copy and paste it. Now you can have a notepad someplace with codes that you saved from different things. So you can find it easily or like a Google doc or something, but it doesn't store inside service autopilot. No, that's a great yeah, question. I usually, I usually keep on mine in uh, Google keep that way. Like if I'm on like my iPad or iPhone or whatever, I can go to that Google keep and yeah. I can find that embed code. Uh, that way it's always on all of my devices. That's the way I've been doing it. I just didn't know if there was an easier way to do it. No, and I don't know why, honestly, I have no idea. So I keep copying and pasting this thing. 
copy. I'm going to try it one more time. <clears throat> I'm going to close. I'm going to close the document and open it back up. <clears throat> um, and see if maybe that changes it. Video here. I'm going to paste it. Save it. Every time I click away from it, though, and leave it and come back, it's not saving it. I have no idea what this thing is doing. All right, well, I don't think I'm going to be able to show you what it's like playing the video in there. I, we have them. We have, we have ready business system documents. I'm looking at one. That's where I was copying the other code from. Um, that play when you show the estimate document. I know you can put it in the estimate description items, but you can have them built into the documents, which again, I don't understand why it's not saving it. And then it'll play on the estimates because this is the estimate type. Like, I'm not sure. Um, and I didn't test it because I didn't think I had to, but it's not saving when I save and paste it. Okay. Anyway, we'll, we'll have to deal with the HTML part later because we're at 11. So the last thing I want to show you is Invoice emails are the same as estimate documents <clears throat> in that you can add a grid that shows the invoice the invoice information when you add it. And that's where you you would add that here from the document and then you could you could not show it. You could still just show the invoice total and invoice number, but this will show like the invoice line items that are separate. And they'll they'll send there um, that way, and I can show you that pretty quickly um, from one of the client accounts. If I go to Baby Ruth, which all has all these invoices, and I click email, well, let's just send an invoice. So if I open, click the invoice, and I click email, then it's going to give you eventually the option to add in the residential invoice email if you scroll down this is just showing like the stuff but this is where it adds the grid so that part you customize in the grid and it's the same with the estimate so if you're using estimates um it's there but otherwise here this is where the other stuff is invoice number and it just shows the other um it just shows the details that you had from like this one's not showing that and this one what's this one called um launch bundle residential invoice email so let's go to that one and we can click that box and scroll down oops too far and we go to launch bundle residential invoice email now it changes to red and it shows those numbers it it shows that stuff which that it doesn't have the right launch bundle grid pulled that's why it's not showing the details um but it'll you can change it to whichever invoice format um you want it to be able to send and it'll it'll load with those with those formats um again same with the estimates if you had the estimate document and it was loading it would show whatever document your you know the changes to the documents and all the stuff you added into it when you create the estimate all right, well, that's unfortunately the HTML didn't work. Um, I'm trying to think if there was a way that I could show you one that's not. Let me look and see. No, I don't know a way I could show you one quickly. Um, we have, we do have, but I, I mean, I literally was working on a client account email. That's why I had it open um, and copied their code from it. But for whatever reason, it's not saving this video here again i'll try it again but yeah every time i go to leave it it's not it's not saving in there i don't, I don't have a clue why and maybe it's not working i might have to send an, an email to service autopilot and ask them what's going on um but you should be able to add a video and then the video would play here below where you type the text i don't even think you need the text i just thought maybe it was saving it because of that um yeah so unfortunately, can't show you that part. But that's the document editor stuff and going through all the documents. Does anybody that have any questions about what was covered? <clears throat> I don't want to keep, <coughs> excuse me. I don't want to keep people too much time past. We're here at two hours. Um, but if you have questions, I can answer some real quick if anybody has any.
If not, and you're not a Ready Business System customer, be sure to um, schedule a call with Steve and he can go over all the different options that we have of the different <clears throat> things we can build out into your system. Um, and if you are, thank you for being a, a great customer. Um, I, am, I don't know, recognize anybody on here that I do work in your account, but slowly as I transition into more, you, we might have meetings together coming up. Um, Aside from that, we have three more trainings, six, seven, and eight. Yeah, three more trainings left. Um, so be on the lookout for those if you're going to attend. And I will post the recording of this on our YouTube channel. It takes a while for Zoom to send it to me, and then I have to download it. And then I have to upload it to um, to YouTube. And that sometimes takes three or four hours because they're two-hour long videos. So it probably won't be, it may be tomorrow. It'll be up there by the end of the week for sure. So keep an eye out for that if you wanted to watch the recording of all of this um, so that you can go back and watch it again or see any of the stuff I showed you. Um, I'm really disappointed that the HTML part wasn't working. I was I was hoping to be that be the, the, the landing the plane moment where you got to see the cool part at the end. But for some reason, the video and the HTML, the iframe's not working. Um, so yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Hopefully this was useful and helpful content. Um, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check all that stuff out. Send me an email if you have feedback or anything you want to share. Um, and, let, and let me know if you have other questions. Just yeah, shoot me an email and uh, I'll be glad to help.